The Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Indigo Disc DLC is here and it brought with it both new and old Pokemon. With threats like Metagross and Incineroar returning, as well as some new Pokemon like Iron Crown and Iron Boulder being in the metagame, it's time to discuss just how strong we can expect each Pokemon to be. So today, let's do a tier list and see where we rank each one of these new and old Pokemon. If you enjoy this damn point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content. And before we get into the video, this channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTED at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. All right, here we are doing a tier list for all the Pokemon introduced into the Indigo Disc DLC. We won't be covering any old Pokemon, just the new ones, just the new ones. And I also had to, you see how this thing moves around? That's because Nintendo's been copyright striking people who talk about the new Pokemon that shall not be named. Um, and because of that, I had to go and inspect element and hide this Pokemon. <laughs> As you can see, it exists, but it does not. We will not be discussing that Pokemon. Not that it'd be VGC legal anyways, but yeah, we're going to be doing a tier list. I think tier lists are a decent way to explain how good Pokemon are uh broadly like to a large audience who aren't too familiar with competitive pokemon but even those who are familiar with competitive pokemon will get the nuance of it that being said tier lists have one weakness in that you aren't able to discuss the niche situations where it's good on the list itself so this video is going to release with the image that i'm sure i'm going to get lots of comments saying what what do you mean meganium's not good i i, I used a rocky helmet and it beat uh, a 1v1's urshifu and i'm like yeah sure okay whatever fine um Tier lists are hilarious because you get tons of comments on them because people want to defend their favorites. But we're going to talk about the viability of each one of the Pokemon legal and VGC, which means we're going to skip over Deoxys and stuff. Uh, and we're just going to rank them. And I have a very clear ranking system so people don't get confused. S. We all know what S means. Best Pokemon ever. Just incredible. A. Great. These Pokemon are phenomenal. You'll see them in a lot of teams. B. Okay. Niche, but you'll definitely see them, right? C is, yeah, sure, I guess, which means... You can make it work if you really want to. Um, and D is good luck, which means I'm sure there'll be one person who tries really hard to make it work and maybe they'll do something. In my opinion, there is no Pokemon below good luck tier. You can do F and say that nothing will ever work for it, which is true for like Cosmog, but you get my point. Let's get into it. Argue in the comment section. Venusaur, that's a B tier. So Venusaur, historically and as you can tell this is my second time going through this because i forgot to record the first time um venusaur historically is a really good chlorophyll user with sleep powder sludge bomb weather ball and like earth power and like all these coverage moves it has um you can run like life orb or focus sash on it i think in this gen you're probably just going to want to go with focus sash and like terra ghost uh but it's going to be decent you'll be able to sleep a lot of pokemon especially now that like there's no tapu finny or tapu coco in the game uh, you'll be able to go for like that super fast sleep powder, put something to sleep uh, next to a Torkoal, which is activating protosynthesis on like a Fluttermane and a, um, what is it called? And a Walking Wake. By the way, Walking Wake and Iron Leaves aren't on this tier list, but if I had to rank them, Walking Wake would be A and Iron Leaves would be D um, or possibly C. But yeah, uh, it's going to do well on Sun teams. I can't put it any lower than a B, but I don't think Sun is going to be the best archetype. So I'm going to put it just there. If, if Sun ends up being good, great, you know, but um. It'll just be like an all right archetype. I think Rain's still going to dominate. Speaking of Rain, um, this guy's out of the job ever since like, you know, other water Pokemon just completely outclassed it. Blastoise should be like favorited by Game Freak as a Gen 1 Pokemon, but it just hasn't gotten the same tools that other Gen 1 starters have. Uh, Fake Out, Icy Wind, Muddy Water, Yawn. It gets such a great support move pool along with like amazing stats for the role of a support Pokemon, but it just... It just falls short. You know, it just doesn't... It, it's the ability. It doesn't have an ability. It's Torrent or Rain Dish. If this guy had, like, I don't know, Fur Coat, something to, like, reduce damage further or, like, intimidate, something similar to those type of abilities, it'd be incredible. But it just doesn't. And that for that reason, it, like, it falls short. It's good in, like, Torrent Urshifu. Don't get me wrong. You can swap out Yawn for Ice Beam and just annihilate Torrent Urshifu. Um... But yeah, we have yet to see this guy really get any results outside of Dynamax, where it did have a niche, uh, but Dynamax is gone. You're going to go in. Uh, technically, it gets Chlorophyll Sleep Powder, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Hold on. 
Bioplume, Chlorophyll. Sleep Powder. Yeah, technically you can do this, and it also has Strength Sap. I don't think it's that good. You can do Effect Spore, Strength Sap, Sleep Powder. But it's it's pretty, it's going to be pretty fringe. It does have a higher special attack set than Venusaur, though, so you can maybe make a case for it. I'll put it in, in good luck. Our Chaldon's going to be... I'm going to say okay. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's great. It's still like super Fluttermane weak, even though it's a steel type because of its low spit F. That Assault Vest doesn't really help it that much once the Fluttermane terrestrializes. But it's still good. It's still good on Rain, and Rain's going to be good, but I've been testing with it. I've played against it a lot, and it feels like it's a very hit or miss Pokemon. It either shows up to a game and does nothing, or it shows up and does everything. Like, it, there's no in-between. And for that reason, it's just, it's just okay. You know, you're not going to bring it to a ton of games. Tentacruel is going to be a good luck for me. Yes, it can kind of wall out Flutter. Yes, it can wall out Golden Go. But there are tons of other Pokemon that can do that. And it just doesn't really have the tools. Dodrio is the same. It's just not like a, a great... It's not just a great... It, it, it's it's a flying type in competition with like a million other great Pokemon. Dugong, same situation. It's a good luck, but it does have cool tools. I, I need to give Dugong its, its fair shake here. Um, it does have the combination of Fake Out, Parish Song, Protect, and like Ice Beam or Ice, Ice, Icy Wind or whatever. It does have like Thick Fat Hydration Ice Spot. It has decent abilities, I guess, but its stats just aren't there. If this thing had 100 HP and like 10 more in both of its defenses, yeah, I could see Dugong getting used, but it doesn't. So it's going to be good luck. Hydra Bull. It's going to be yeah, sure, I guess. Um, and that's for the reason that it has cool tools and it has great stats, but its typing means it is a Terra Sync. It is always going to be a Terra Sync, right? Fickle Beam's good into like the many dragon types that exist this gen. Um, being immune to Spore and Rage Powder is awesome. You can use like Draco, Giga Drain, and Pollen Puff to like heal up your partners. But the fact of the matter is it is a Terra Sync and there are other great grass types. Keep in mind, this guy's in competition with Amoongus and Rillaboom. Like, when you're in competition with Amoongus and Rillaboom, you're always going to be playing second fiddle. Trust me, I know. I, I love Wo Chen. And I would never put Wo Chen above C tier. <laughs> so for that, I'm, I'm going to put him in, in C tier. Uh, next up is Gouging Fire. So, Gouging Fire is really cool. I actually think this guy has the potential to be like A tier. And I'm going to be generous with him. I'm going to be generous with him because this guy has so many sets it can run. For one, for one, Booster Energy. I've, I've talked about this set before, but like a Howl set. You can go Jolly Nature. This one's kind of fringe, by the way. You can go like Jolly Nature, max out the HP, hit 143 on your attack, hit 143 on your defense, a little bit of spit F, and you have access to super fast Howl to partner up you and your partner, Breaking Swipe, uh, Burning Bulwark, the best move ever, and of course, uh, Temper Flare, that new move that, you know, is just fire type stomping tantrum. So this guy will never be flinched. No one in the right mind would flinch this guy. But the other set that you can run is an adamant nature where you can max out your speed max out your attack or do something similar get hit like an attack bump like 196 i'm pretty sure is the bump yeah get some like decent hp a little bit of defenses and now instead of howl you run dragon dance and i think you still run breaking swipe and burning bulwark and temper flare but you can also swap this out for flare blitz if you really want to and if you run it next to a rillaboom that's probably the better idea but this guy puts on so much pressure turn one. It's 143 speed, which means that you're um, speed tying with Scarf Lando after a Dragon Dance. And then you're just able to deal so much damage. Plus one Breaking Swipe with a booster attack is a ridiculous amount of damage. It plays sort of like Roaring Moonwood next to King Gambit, which is why you think you want to pair it with King Gambit. And these guys have like some sauce they can really go into. Like they, they have some sauce in the sauce cabinet that they can really dig into here. So for that... Because it has so much potential, I'm gonna put it in A tier. I think it's a great Pokemon. Same to you. I'm tempted to put, I'm tempted to put Raging Bolt in S, but it's too early. It's too early. Also, we're not ranking within the tiers. I'm just gonna put them both in great. But Raging Bolt, I cannot, I cannot talk about enough. I'm definitely bringing Raging Bolt to Portland. Uh, this guy with a booster energy. It's absurd how much damage this guy does. So, you hit 189, modest, right? Modest, you hit 207. After a booster energy, you get the 1.3 times boost, right, to your special attack stat. And then you also run Calm Mind, Protect, Thunderclap, and Dragon Pulse. 
And I've always said Dragon Pulse is a really underwhelming move. It feels like it doesn't do nearly enough damage and it bounces off of things. No, this thing's Dragon Pulse will chunk so much. I've seen it one shot in Cinerose at plus one because of the booster energy on top of it. 137 special attack. I don't know what they were thinking, but this guy is an answer to, um, it's an answer to Urshifu Tornadus, which has been one of the best archetypes in the game, like since Pokemon Home Pokemon were allowed. Uh, so being able to use that priority electric move to just threaten a one shot on both of those guys has led to the, uh, to the rise of Landorus Incarnate, the special attacking one, as a way to check this guy. The fact that this guy has forced Tornadus Urshifu to adjust to its presence is just enough to, yeah, that's, that's like an immediate A bordering on S. It's also just really hard to KO. Look at these stats. 125 HP, 191 defense, or sorry, 125 HP, 91 defense, 89 special attack. I can't speak. Special defense, 137 special attack, and 75 speed. It can do whatever it wants to. And like, you don't even have to, you can literally run it under Tailwind if you really want to. You can hit 108. And it still is like a really scary Pokemon. Like hitting 108 speed means that under Tailwind, you can just spam Dragon Pulse and outspeed everything. Yeah, the damage calcs on this guy are absurd. Let me pull this up real quick. So Raging Bolt. If we give it 252, modest, and a booster energy, and put it up against Incineroar. We'll just do max HP and like 36 spit F Incineroar, why not? Right? Now we'll, we'll even go 156. We'll go bulkier, right? Dragon Pulse. Dragon Pulse. The first Dragon Pulse does 49 to 58% just off of the booster energy. Did I even activate it? Yes, I did. Okay, I wanted to make sure I activated it. And then if you get a Calm Mind off, you it's a... Oh, that's plus two. My bad. If you get a Calm Mind off, 73 to 86%. This Pokemon's like actually a little ridiculous. So, no. It, it's 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 definitely going... I'm, I'm tempted to put it in S, but I'm still like too scared to. Um, Iron Boulder is interesting. I think Iron Boulder, uh, Iron Boulder does have potential. So, it has this new move called... Not great cleave, mighty cleave. It's 100% accurate, 95 base power rock move that bypasses protection. So basically, it's it's Urshifu, little mini Urshifu. Um, but the only issue is I think that's the only move that it really wants to run. It has a really decent attack stat at 120 and like a really good speed stat at 124. And I think you have to run booster energy on it, but I think that you have to go adamant. I don't think you want to speed boost on this guy, as good as it would be, right? The speed boost feels like it incentivizes the opponent to really just intimidate cycle you and it feels like after a single intimidate it's hard to get anything done so by going for booster attack there's a lot more pressure in the opponent and you can still run swords dance protect um and whatever final move you want to run probably some kind of psychic move zen headbutt even like just any other sorry like a ground coverage move would be decent that's the that's the main issue with it actually. It like it has trouble finding a final move. Sacred Sword, I guess you could run Sacred Sword. And that would hit most things. Yeah, Sacred Sword, Mighty Cleave. You don't run Psychic Stab on this guy. Uh just because it feels like it doesn't get a lot of value out of it. So, I don't know. Uh I've ha I'm having trouble finding a spot for it on a lot of teams. It feels like you have to build around it. I'm gonna put it in okay. And I'm going to take Iron Crown, and I have to think about this guy. Iron Crown is a really scary Pokemon for end games. Um, I've seen Booster Energy Special Attack and Booster Energy Speed. I think that the speed boosting one is better, just because it means that like you outspeed everything, including like Fluttermane, and you can go for Expanding Force. And you also have Tachyon Cutter, which allows you to um, check like Fairy types, a lot of like Psychic types, and like I don't know, a lot of Psychic types are like Terra Fairy, like Indeedee. So if you need a one shot in Indeedee, you can go for Tachyon Cutter into that guy. Um, other things really has going for it. I mean, it kind of has to run protect. Otherwise, you get one shot by a lot of things. Um, because oh geez, hold on, how do I undo that? Like it has good bulk, 90, 100, 108, but like the typing steel psychic, like a, a king gambit loves that. Like just being able to sucker punch you. You could also do volt switch as your final move. I've even seen like choice spec set. I've seen choice spec sets running around, and like terror blast is the final move. There's a couple of things you can do with this guy. I think it's decent. I'm going to put it in uh, great. Nah, I'm going to put it in okay. It doesn't feel like it's as good as these guys, but it's good for like certain end games. This guy's not legal. And now we get into older Pokemon. 
Um, and we're gonna kind of speed run this because we're through all the new guys. Like I've given my thoughts on all of the new guys, but some of these guys, they're like not gonna do much. Um, both of the executors are yeah, sure, okay. Because they get trick room and they're grass types and they've always like had fringe appearances and top cuts, but they're not great. The Hitmons are gonna go into good luck. Um, and I actually think that Hitmon top is, is pretty okay. So Hitmon top, I wanna cover that guy really quick, why I think it's pretty okay. Um, its main issue before was the existence of fairy types like Tapu Koko and stuff, which don't exist anymore. Uh, but now its main issue is Fluttermane, which does exist. However, Hitmon top has always run Assault Vest because it just becomes really difficult to KO with, you know, max HP and like those high special defense and defense stats with Intimidate. So you can run like Fake Out, um, Close Combat, Bullet Punch, and Ice Spinner is actually a really good final move for it now that I think about it. Ooh, wait, that's actually a really good final move. And yeah, and I think Terra Steel is good. It just, or Terra Steel or Terra Poison. Terra Steel probably to boost your bullet punch a bit. But what that allows for Hitmontop to do is run like, set like this, right? Enough speed to outspeed opposing Hitmontops. Um, adamant Nature. Make sure you get as much damage out of your close combats as possible. Hit the attack bump, some spit F, some defense. Terra Steel. And it can just, it can get a lot done, you know? Close combat will one shot a lot of um, dark types. Incineroar, if it comes in on that, won't live uh, unless it, you know, intimidates. But if you're able to like fire that off for free, yeah. Um, bullet punch is just there for catching flutter mains, and ice spinner just removes terrain, allowing you to go for fake outs and like bullet punches and stuff later on in the game, rather than having psychic train up. It's a decent mon. Uh, I'm gonna put it in okay because I feel like it's gonna see some usage, but it's gonna take some time. Evil light right on is not the play. I think that I think that Lapras can do stuff, but it's not the best. I'm gonna put it in sure. It's just like another Parish Song Mon, but it has decent stats. Meganium is good luck. I mean, it, the only thing Meganium can do is really stall. I think it did get Swords Dance, which is kind of funny. Yeah, for some reason it got Swords Dance, but it's got 82 attack, so I don't know what it's gonna do with that. Uh, for Alligator is gonna be sure, I guess. You can get away with it. It's a Life Orb Sheer Force attacker. Good luck to this guy. This is another Chlorophyll mod with like Quiver Dance and stuff, so that's probably fine. This guy's gonna be in good luck. Good luck. Uh, Kingdra. I want to put it in okay, but it feels like Rain doesn't really miss Kingdra as much as I thought it would. I was pretty certain Kingdra would be like a decent Rain Pokemon this gen, but the fact of the matter is, Kingdra, with a timid nature, hits 150. Iron Bundle with a speed boost hits 309. And this thing only hitting 300 means it's it's Iron Bundle food. Um, it doesn't even outspeed Fluttermane with a speed booster, does it? No, it doesn't because that hits 306. So Kingdra's kind of, eh, it does still get Muddy Water. Does it still get Hurricane? It does. It gets like nice coverage, right? In Draco. I don't know. May someone in the comments is going to be like, put Dragon Shear. Nah, it's just, it's, it's a yeah, sure, I guess, Pokemon. Porygon 2 is great. It is so good. Porygon 2 is like super reliable. Um, personally, I'm running it. I think it's just like one of the best Pokemon in the format right now. It's really easy to go for uh, Eviolite, Trick Room stuff. Uh, you have download to boost your special attacks. So Thunderbolts and Ice Beams hit like a truck, even though they're like non-stab to basically become stab moves. And it has access to both Recover and Trick Room. So I don't know. It's hard to make a case for this Pokemon not being like possibly S tier, probably just A tier. Uh, but yeah, I'm personally going to run Terra Poison. It's it's a great mod. It has so many tools and it's got a lot of sauce to it. Yeah, great. Smeargle. <laughs> Smeargle. Okay, so honestly, Smeargle gets a lot worse now that we play open team sheets, but on closed team sheets, it's probably still fine. You still do the usual. You have Fake Out, Spiky Shield, um, Follow Me, and Spore. And that's what you run. And that's fine. But that's all it's going to do. Uh, I think it'll still exist. I'm going to put it in. Sure, I guess. Um, I actually don't think it's going to be okay anymore. Same with Raikou is going to be a sure, I guess. Entei, I actually think is going to be okay. Even great. Actually, we're, we're going to put Entei in great. Um, and here's why. Entei is just a better Hisuian Arcanine. It's like if Arcanine 
Here, I'm going to put him on the screen. Arcanine and Dragonite. Arcanine and Dragonite. And Entei. Entei is like... Why can't I hit the right box here? Entei is like if Hisui and Arcanine and Dragonite had a baby. You see the bulk on Hisui and Arcanine? Entei's is better because it has. It has its mother's bulk. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's also got um, Inner Focus, just like Dragonite. And they both have E-Speed. And uh, it has the attack stat of an Arcanine along with the fire stab of an Arcanine, but with higher speed than both of them. So for that reason, it just kind of outclasses both in my opinion. Even though you don't hit as hard as a Dragonite, your extreme speed will always go first. So you can do the Terra Normal stuff. You can Choice Band it. But above all else, you also have access to Sacred Fire, one of the best moves in the game. 95 accuracy, 50% chance to burn, pause the user. And it's just a physical fire move. It's just, it's really good. You, you take no recoil on like Dragonite or on like Arcanine's uh, Flare Blitz. And you still have access to like the essential tools, your Stomping Tantrum and uh, honestly your Stone Edges and a bad final move. So that's going to go in. That's going to go in A tier for me. Suicune, I actually think is going to be... I consider it okay um, for one reason. They let Suicune keep Scald. And it also still gets Tailwind, and it still gets Inner Focus, and it gets Icy Wind, and it's just like a decent Pokemon for that reason. It gets a lot of tools. I don't know. It does pretty decent to Torn Shifu, with like, you know, just spamming your your your, your moves in general. Uh, does it get Taunt? Does it get Taunt? But no. It gets, it gets a lot of moves. I'm going to say it's okay, because I don't want to put it any lower than that. I just don't think that... Oh, it also still gets Sheer Cold. That's funny. You could spam that if you really wanted to. Like, this Pokemon doesn't die. It's 100 HP, 115 in both defenses. It's kind of like a Water-type Cresselia, but with <laughs> with higher uh, higher uh, speed. Actually, is it higher than Cresselia? Isn't Cresselia, like, 80? Or is it 85 as well? No, it's, oh, it's just, like, Water-type Cresselia. Cool. Okay. So. Lugia, you, you're not legal. Sceptile got Shed Tail. It's going to be a yeah, sure, I guess, Pokemon. Possibly good luck still. Same with Blaziken. Same with Swampert. They just have too much competition. Plus, so on Minon got some fun tools, but they don't have enough. I think that you could make a case for Flygon, but it's not great. It's just a levitating dragon type, and it didn't get anything really new this gen. But I still think that like the 100 base speed puts it at a point where Choice Scarf Flygon with Rock Slide could see a result, but it's not going to be like a top cut. It's going to be like a day two. Um, Metagross is, I think, okay, not great, um, but it's good. It's good. Metagross got some fun tools this gen. Uh, it has access to Heavy Slam now, which I don't believe it got before, uh, but it's really nice for that reason. Or maybe it did get it before, and I'm just an idiot, and we never ran it. But yeah, you can run like, as you can run it as like an assault vest attacker with clear body, so you can't be intimidated. Heavy Slam, Bullet Punch. Stomping Tantrum, and then your final move can be whatever you need it to be. Um, I've seen Ice Punch a lot just to take out Landorus, and you, run, you can run Terra Dragon on this guy. Terra Dragon's a really good defensive Terra, since you threaten a one-shot of Fluttermanes with Bullet Punch anyways. Um, they won't want to, like, attack into you that often. And yeah, just this set will get you by. Sorry. Do, like, that. That should be, like, your standard Metagross set. Good Pokemon. Good Pokemon. Um, Terrapagos, not legal. Regice, that's going to be a good luck. I don't see it working. Um, these guys could do stuff. I mean, we've seen weakness policy. Uh, we've seen weakness policy Reg Regirock work before, but it's still like kind of iffy. Uh, Regiseal though does have the uh, ability to go for the body press iron defense sets, which is always going to be good. And I'm going to put both of the Lotties in okay after testing with both of them. I actually think that Latias is a little bit better than Latios because Latias got a big buff this gen. Latias now gets access to Draining Kiss. And there was a there was a team that was running around a while back with Spectrier, the boy you would run Calm Mind, Drain, or Nasty Plot Draining Kiss or whatever. But you this guy gets Calm Mind. So like Calm Mind, Draining Kiss. Um I don't know if you would run Recover. I would actually just run Protect with Leftovers, to be honest. And then for your final move, you can do like Dragon Pulse, but actually Mist Ball is pretty good as well. You lower the special attack set. It got buffed this gen. They got majorly buffed. 
and then you just run Terra Fairy, <clears throat> and it's it's pretty good with like screens intimidate stuff. It's it's a really annoying Pokemon to break. So, yeah. Also, also um, Latios. Its move got buffed. Luster Purge. It's now 95 base power, 50% chance lower target special defense step by one. Kind of like Seed Flare. So interesting mon, interesting mon. I think they're good. Not not great though. All the Deoxys are not currently legal, so we'll throw those guys down there. Also, they're not going to be. Rampardos, that's a good look. Someone someone on Twitter was like, when I released my initial tier list before I did like much testing, they're like, dude, you just you just run Adamant Max uh, max Speed, Max Attack Rampardos, and you just take KOs. And I'm like, no, you don't, because you don't get to move, because it's still slower than everything, and still drops to everything. Bastiodon. That's going to be, uh, honestly, I put it in yet, yeah, okay, in, in I guess, right? I, I'm going to put it in I guess, even though I know it's probably just bad. But I have some faith in Bastiodon, because it did get Iron Defense and Body Press. And it still has, like, Heavy Slam and stuff. And it can tear away its, its horrible typing. So maybe it can do something. I'm going to put it in, in yeah, sure, I guess. Rhyperior is going to be another yeah, sure, I guess. I mean, it's Rhyperior. It has Solid Rock as an ability. And I don't know. It's got like really good HP and really bad Spadef, but it also has like a super high attack stat. Rock Slide, high horsepower. I don't think you can run Protect because you probably want an Assault Vest. But maybe you can. Maybe you can do like Weakness Policy, Solid Rock. And honestly, I would just tear it away one of your two typings. I think I would want to go with Rock Typing because it lets you get rid of the Ground Typing. So you're not taking times four from grass or times four from water. Um, but you still activate your weakness policy with solid rock active, so you take less damage. And then you can just like... Honestly, this is kind of a crazy here. Get like the first attack bump. And then put the rest there. And you can get away with a lot this way. You're able to live a decent amount of attacks with solid rock. If you tear a rock, get rid of the times four weakness, get your plus two on like a trick room team and go for plus two rock slides. It could do something. I don't think it's the best Pokemon though. So it's going to be a yeah, sure, I guess. Electivire, you got that new electric move. You're still yeah, sure, I guess. I know that they also got follow me. I just, we have Clefairy still. We have Amoongus still. It's hard to justify using these guys over that. And I know someone's going to say Magmar um, won a tournament. And I'm like, yeah, it, it won the first tournament. It won the first tournament. Like, calm down. You know, it's not. I'm not. I'm not downplaying the success of that person. I'm just saying that, like, we can't take one tournament result where Magmar won as like definitive proof that it's going to be great. So we have to. We have to let people learn the format first. Um, Oregon Z. I think it's going to be another. Yeah, sure. I guess. Um, Oregon Z is interesting. Even with, I, I try to make a case for it using the the Stellar Terra, but the more I think about it. The worse it gets. Stellar Terror only gives you a 20% boost on every move once. So yeah, you can run Ice Beam once and it hits like you have, I don't know, a Never Melt Ice. And you can click Thunderbolt once and it hits like you have a Magnet. But it doesn't hit like it's a stab move. Hyper Beam. And honestly, Aeroblast. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting mod, don't get me wrong. It's just not, it's not where it needs to be. Someone will do something with it, I'm sure. Porygon 2 is just outright better, though. Superior, I think... I want to put it in yes, sure, I guess. And I know it's not ranked within the tiers, but it'd be really close to being okay. Um, and that's because it's in a really decent spot right now with Terra. Once again, you're a grass type, so you're competing with Rillaboom and Amoongus, but it is able to do Contrary Leaf Storm. And, and a lot of people say, like, you should run Stellar Terra to give yourself Contrary on that. You shouldn't. Um, you should probably run either Terra Fire or Terra Water. Maybe even like Terra Poison. Just to remove like weaknesses and stuff. Um, and be good defensively. Because the whole thing with um, with Superior is that it's only two moves that really clicks are Dragon Pulse and Leaf Storm. Which means you get walled up by Steel types. So by going Terra Fire, Terra Blast, it lets you beat Steel types now. And it gives you another move. And let's be real. In what situation... All right, here's, here's the deal, right? Leaf Storm, 130 base power. 
with stab is even resisted going to do a lot while also letting you snowball a lot easier than Terra Blast Stellar, which isn't it's it's gonna hit for 80 base power, you know, or 100 or whatever it is. It's you're gonna want to click Leaf Storm most of the time. It's it's just not great. So yeah, I'm gonna put it in. Yeah, sure, I guess. Embor, that's gonna be a good look. I just don't see the mon working. Same with this guy, Excadrill. I've seen Sand work, and Sand is interesting. It has to run Raging Bolt though, otherwise you lose to Torn Shifu. But it's still good. Um, I'm gonna put it in Yasher, yeah, sure, I guess. But yeah, a lot of people are probably saying like, why is everything in, in the middle of the tier list? Because guess what? The, the, it's a distribution. Most things fall towards the middle. That's how math works. Um, so, Whimsicott. I'm going to put it in OK. I don't think it's great. A lot of people thought it'd be a lot more annoying than it is right now, including myself. But Whimsicott has access to not Whirlipede, not Whirlipede as much as I miss Whirlipede. Whimsicott is able to run Focus Sash with Tailwind. Encore, Protect, and Moonblast. And this is one of the most annoying sets ever. You can also run Taunt, by the way, it gets Taunt as well. One of the most annoying sets ever. If you want to fake it out, congrats. Next turn, you'll be faking it out for the next five turns, or for the next three turns. Um, if you want to go for a Tailwind and you're a Tornadus, good luck, you're getting taunted. If you want to Protect on an attack, good luck, you're going to be Protecting for the next three turns. One of the most annoying Pokemon in the game. It also has access to a bunch of like other really annoying moves like Fake Tears, but the fact of the matter is, it's it's like only used on sun teams, if anything, because it gets sunny day, right? But unlike Tornadus, it does not get rain dance, so it's not the partner that Urshifu wants at the moment, bringing, it to, bringing down its viability a little bit and just leaving it like as an okay Pokemon. Scrafty's going to be a yeah, sure, I guess. Minchino's going to be a good luck. Reuniclus is yeah, sure, I guess. Um, let me speed run those guys. Intimidate Fake Out. Not a great mon overall stat-wise, normal type in competition with a ton of other Pokemon that you want to run over it. And then Reuniclus has like expanding force. Galvantula, I'm gonna put it at good luck. Yes, it's an electric type, but it's in competition with Raging Bolt now, so it's really hard to choose the bug type over the electric dragon. Golurk is another good luck. It doesn't have it doesn't have the tools, man. I wish Golurk was better. Scott. How is something this huge and not have a high HP stat? I don't know. It gets Poltergeist now. That's pretty cool. It gets high horsepower. It became a better attacker. They gave it better moves. But like... I don't know. It just doesn't... It doesn't do what it needs to. No guard's pretty interesting. But like, what, what is that even going to help you with here? You're just like, what? Never going to miss a Poltergeist? I don't know. Not a great mon. Wish it was better. Cobalion. Um, yeah, sure, I guess. Beat up Justified beat up justified beat up justified they're all here uh you guys are not legal none of you guys are legal let's get through all of you all of you and we'll move these guys down so we don't have to worry about them later and are we missing anybody no we're in the last batch of pokemon the meow sticks are gonna be yeah sure i guess i'm pretty sure they both get prankster right do they Meowstic. Oh no, only one of them gets Prankster. The competitive one's going to go down, but the Prankster one... Yeah, so blue Meowstic is going to be C tier because it gets Prankster and Fake Out and stuff. And then the other one's just going to be good luck. Malamar's interesting. It's a Trick Room Pokemon. It has Intimidate. It's going to go yeah, sure, I guess. Um, Incineroar. Congratulations, our only S tier. Welcome to your Throne King. I don't need to explain why. Primarina is actually, I think, an okay Pokemon. Um, I definitely put it above all these. Primarina is a water fairy type, meaning it does well into Torn Shifu as well as a ton of other archetypes. And it also has a really good special attack set at 126 in great bulk with 80, 74, and 116. And it also has a signature ability called Liquid Voice, which turns all of its um, sound moves into water type attacks. So it can click Hyper Voice, which is basically just Surf, but it doesn't hit your partner. Um, and it also gets Throat Spray. So Throat Spray, Hyper Voice, uh, Terra Water is actually really good in this guy. You just hit like a truck. And then it gets Moon Blast, Ice Beam, or even ice, Icy Wind as well. And it gets other really cool moves. If you really want to, you can run Encore on Trick Room. That's been a really fun one for me, uh, just locking things into their Protect. But great Pokemon overall. Two Cannons going to be a good luck. Um, I'm going to put a Raquinid in OK. 
Uh, this guy just takes KOs. This Pokemon's ridiculous. I really like Araquanid. I'm a little biased. It's one of my favorite Pokemon, but also I, it, it's okay that I'm a little biased because it's just kind of true. Yes, it only has 70 attack, right? But its ability Water Bubble means it can't be burned, so it does well into like Entei and like other Pokemon. Uh, it resists fire moves, so if you are, even though you're like Bug Water, you still resist, and its water power is doubled, so its liquidation before stab is 85, and then with Water Bubble, it becomes 170, and then with stab, what does that become? That is plus 85, 170, plus 85, what is that? It's like 265 or something? I don't know, I don't want to do math, but um... Yeah, it's a really powerful move after stab. And then you just apply like a mystic water on top of that. And then you also let it tear a water and under trick from this guy. Just there's no switching in on this guy. Uh, you can run leech life for some recovery, even though your attack's only 70. Um, it'll still net like 50% on a ton of uh, Rillaboom sets. And then I run wide guard and protect because being able to block dragon energies, snarls, icy winds, uh, rock slides, that's huge in this format. So yeah, also bleak wind. You just block bleak wind, which is awesome. Comfey. That's going to be, yeah, sure, I guess. Interesting Mon. It'll definitely find a niche somewhere. Um, people are asking me, what do you think about it getting Tailwind this gen? I've had that question asked me five times now. Uh, it always got Tailwind. Since Generation 7, Ultra Sun Ultraman, it got Tailwind. Never clicked it, though, because Trick Room is just better. And the reason Trick Room is just better for it is because its partners are slow, bulky Pokemon that don't want to drop. So, Comfey having access to Priority Floral Healing. Um... Yeah, priority floral healing as well as trick room draining kiss for you know a decent stab move that also has priority on it and just other really nice moves encore um taunt it's a good mon pretty good mon its stats leave a little bit to be desired 51 90 100 i think if its hp was like 60 it'd be like really good but we'll take it <laughs> we'll take it it's a good mon i like it uh we'll throw it in yeah sure i guess but like towards the top Minior is a good luck for sure. Uh, Alchemy does have Decorate. <sighs> if, Al if Malamar's here, Alchemy can be here, I guess. Duraldon is, yeah, sure, I guess, for Eagleite. And Regigigas, I'm sorry, it's not happening. Like, all right, we've tried it, right? We tried slacking Weezing. 160 attack, you know, decent bulk, decent speed. Regigigas Weezing is the same concept. Yes, it is bulkier on the special side, but it's less bulky on the physical side, and that matters a lot in this current format. So, and they have the exact same attack stat. Exact same, 160. What moves, what moves does it have that it wants to click that slacking wouldn't? Nothing really. I guess it gets double edge. Does slacking get double edge? Yes, it does. No, there's there's no reason. Yeah, they're, they're just as viable as each other. It's going to be a good luck. It was good in Dynamax. It's just not anymore. It just it just fell off so hard. But yeah, uh, that is my ranking of all of the Regulation F Pokemon. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I think I was pretty fair. I was, I was scarce with my great tiers, conservative with my B tiers, and then I was very, I was, I was just everywhere. You know, everything was just all right. I think I give everything a fair shake. So yeah, someone's still gonna be, they're, they're, they're gonna still be upset in the comments, but it's whatever. Have a nice night. See you in the next one. Bye.